guys, it's Hannah and today we're gonna be talking about books to get you out of a reading slump because God knows all of us have been in a reading slump one way or another in our lives. Mine lasted kind of a few years. I didn't really get back into reading until I moved back home fairly recently. So during my college years, I honestly did not read as much as I would have liked and hoped for, but also I was in college. I was taking a lot of classes. I was doing a lot of extracurriculars. I was doing work and all of the things. Sometimes I'd be gone from literally 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. I was in a very deep reading slump for a while. And these are just some of the books that I have binge read in the past few years years that I think would get a lot of people out of reading slump. Let's dive into all of these books. Every single one of them I literally read in one sitting or read all of the books within a few days. So these are books that I personally have binge read and I think would get people out of a reading slump and it honestly got me to read even more. So I'm gonna be starting off with some romance and then we're gonna transition more into fantasy and other genres. Or, But first up, we have a book that I bought for my coworker for her birthday recently and she does not really read or have a lot of time to read at all. She was like me, she is still in her final year of college, but I bought this book for her because I thought that she would just love it because she's going into nursing and whatnot. And I thought that she would adore it and she is flying through it and it obsessed. It's certified. <laughs> but that book is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Sorry the light is like making it really kind of hard to see. But specifically this book and the connecting book, Yours Truly, they're both such fantastic books. I read them back to back. They were my first two reads of 2024 and I adored them. This first one follows Alexis Montgomery. She is a doctor and she has lived up to the standard of all of the doctors in her family. She's at this hospital where basically her family kind of runs the hospital because they're just such prominent doctors in the area. She's going through a divorce and it's really messy, really, really messy. And one night she is traveling through this small little town to go back home. She ends up running into a ditch and there she meets Daniel, who is this man who pulls her out and they strike up a little bit of a relationship. They're just drawn to each other immediately. And it was just so addicting. Daniel is literally the epitome of a golden retriever. That man only knows love and that's it. <laughs> it was just so cute and deep and so gripping, just like all of these books. I think Abby Jimenez really has a knack for writing very, very addicting characters, specifically the second book, but you have to read this first before you read the second book, but it's still just as good. I gave this five stars and I was like, how can she do better than this? Cause I read this in like a day. I just wanted to keep reading. And then she did better and I was like, well, what the hell do I rate this now? Because yours truly, I was like, like 10 out of five stars. I love that book. One of my all time favorite books now. The second book follows her best friend Brie, which you get a little bit in here, which is why you need to read that one first because takes place after this book and you will get spoiled for this book. It's really fluffy while also dealing with some very interesting familial dynamics that I think a lot of people could relate. Fish out of water vibe of this big city girl and this small town boy, so. It's really cute. Next up is one that I have not been able to shut up about. It's easily become one of my favorite books, The Seven Year Slip on this list, or The Dead Romantics. Both of those I read and did not want to stop reading. I was addicted to this book. I related to it so heavily and it talks about grief in such a great way, at least in my opinion. It's not harmful, which I've read some other books that are not it. Loved this magical realism that Ashley Poston keeps incorporating into her books. I think it's just so fun because it makes you think like, yes, there is magic out there in the world. And I feel like Ashley Poston is just in my head and writing these books. So <laughs> this one takes place in New York City with Clementine. She is in the publishing industry, which is so cool and so interesting to see. Her aunt recently passed away, which she was so incredibly close to her aunt. So she inherits her New York City apartment. Turns out that the the stories that her aunt was telling her as a kid was true and that this kind of apartment is kind of stuck in an other world time slip. One day you might be able to walk into this apartment and be seven years in the past. With that happening, she walks into the apartment and finds this random man standing there. She's like, what are you doing in my apartment? Turns out it's seven years in the past for him. So she has to go about this entire relationship and she starts getting close with him and then also trying to figure out 
what he's doing now, considering it's seven years past when they're meeting. So it's super interesting. I inhaled it and I loved it. It's just one book that I will talk about constantly till the end of time and have been recommending to everyone. If you haven't read this book, please do. It's so brilliant. Next is one that I read in one sitting. Given I was extremely sick and bedridden, but I read in one sitting and I just wanted to keep reading it. I adored this. It felt like a 90s rom-com I would say it's more of like a 90s like coming of age story and I just felt like I could see it all happening and it would just make such a good movie if it's not one already I don't think it is but before we were strangers by Renee Carland is so so raw and emotional you feel it in your gut I just got punched in the gut so many times in this book I got so attached to our main two characters Matt and Grace we switch points of views between them and we start off in the present where Matt ends up seeing Grace on the subway and it turns out that they had been really just automatically had this very intense draw to each other when they first met at NYU in the dorms and and something happens, we switch back from the past and the present to see their relationship grow and how they went basically out of contact for like 10 or more years and how they randomly by chance met again. So it's a second chance romance. It's so, so gut-wrenching and it will just catch you in your feels constantly. It's really short, but it covers such an immersive time and such an expansive time because we start off when they're seniors in college, their beginning of their love story and how that all came to be. It's such like a very deep, fierce love, first love, first true love that is so refreshing to see and you can really just end up loving these characters and all of their flaws because don't get me wrong they're very flawed people the writing and just how it switches back and forth between the past and the present and the differing points of views i was gasping by the end and crying it was just beautiful it was such a beautiful raw read that is super it's really short so so much happens it feels like such a longer book and you just want to keep reading it you will feel satisfied by the end but you will want more if that makes sense like you'll feel satisfied by how it wrapped up and it gives you that closure but you'll want to keep reading their story this is not made into a movie yet this is literally perfect for a movie like genuinely perfect for a movie now we're transitioning more into like the fantasy elements but this book is more of a romanticy so it kind of bridges this gap currently and that is Once Upon a Broken Heart if you guys have not watched my reading vlog on this series go watch it because what are you doing not reading this book. It's popular for a reason. This is a hot take, but I've been here since the beginning of booktube and so I think it's just very interesting nowadays seeing what books are becoming repopularized that were popular way back when but are they're reclaiming as theirs I guess. It's really weird. I don't really know what's going on. I'm always very skeptical about books that people are recommending nowadays like especially like the general public but everyone's obsessed with this for a reason. Go read it. It follows this girl named Evangeline. You don't need to read Carval before this. I did not. I read the first book back when it came out. I don't even know. Like 2014? I don't know. But I never continued on because I just got like distracted with other books and I read it right when I came out. So I just did like remember everything that happened and didn't end up picking the others but I did enjoy it. But this takes place in that world. So we follow Evangeline and she is just I guess naive but also thoughtful and strong character. She believes in happily ever afters and always have. She loves stories and storytelling. Through this her very first love is getting married to her stepsister by surprise. No one saw it coming. It was really random. So she goes to the Prince of Hearts and makes a deal with him, who is this very shady, like, godlike figure in this world. They call him a fate. They make a deal and it just goes from there. Like, so much happens in these books, but it's so addicting. I have not done this in forever, but I was literally walking around the house reading, trying to do other things that I had to do because I could not put this down. I have not done that since probably, like, high school. There's three books. 
you will fly through them. This one took me like two days just because I was busy and a lot of other things were going on. But the other two I read in like a day each. I will say the third book kind of falls short, but it's still really, really good and will totally get you back into the fantasy genre if you haven't been into it in a long time like I have. Used to be my favorite genre and then I kind of grew out of it a little bit. So if you have not read the series, go read it. I cannot recommend it enough. I was addicted. When I tell you I was addicted, I was addicted. Next is one that I read very deep into my reading slump, but I binge read this in the second book. The third one still isn't out yet. I have no idea when it's coming out. I read this one and the second one quite literally back to back and within like a day of each other because I was just it was just so good and that's Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I think this series could be like the Shadowhunter series if Tracy Dion wants it to be. It could be so immersive, so expansive. The main character is so strong and just you can't help but love her. It talks about such good topics too and deep topics and topics that need to be talked about. It's a King Arthur retelling which if you know anything about me I love King Arthur retellings. I will read any King Arthur retelling I can get my hands on or find out about. So if you have any, let me know, please, because I adore King Arthur retellings. This one was just so good. It follows our main character, Rhi, and her mom has passed away, but there's kind of like some weird circumstances going on about that. And Brie wants quite literally nothing to do with her old life now. She just wants to kind of like get away from all of it. So she goes to this special program. It's a special program for high schoolers that take place on a college campus. So it's super interesting. And it turns out that this campus is written with monsters and people who are in secret societies and magic. I read this deep into a reading slump and I couldn't get enough of it. I read them back to back. I read them, I think, like within a day each. Takes place in the real world, but also incorporates these elements and also King Arthur elements. What's not to love? I loved Brie. I loved her character. I think she grew so much throughout the two books. Uh, there's so many layers to it. There's so many layers to it. And I genuinely think this could be such an expansive series like Shadowhunters. Like, I think it could be. Next is another one I talk about quite frequently. It's not really a fantasy book. It's The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I read one of these like a day. Like, I finished all four of these huge books in like a week. They were so good. All I wanted to do was keep reading them. It's Criminal Minds but with teenagers. Each book you need to read them back to back because each book folds into one another and each one has like things that are brought up in the next book and the three books ahead. So like things from this book are mentioned in the very last book and you're like, oh, oh crap. Everything's interwoven, interconnected, and it's just done so brilliantly. The only critique I have is I wish there was a little bit more romance shown because there is a little bit of romance thrown in there, but it's not really there. I think it really takes a back burner, like very much so back burner. It's so good. If you love Criminal Minds, you will love this book. It's brilliant. I can't talk enough about it. I've talked too much about it, to be honest with you. I will literally binge this entire series. It's definitely a great introduction. If you want to read more series, you just want to keep going. I wanted more and more and more, even though there's four books in a novella. And Jennifer Lynn Barnes just writes such great stories and addictive books that even if you read like the inheritance games I think that also would get you out of your reading slump but this one specifically really really gave me that push to get back into reading recently. Next up is another murder mystery going on just because I feel like murder mysteries are very I don't like horror so none of these are horror I can't do horror absolutely not I can do murder mysteries and like a little bit of thriller I can't do body gore nah no no thank you I feel like murder mysteries are very easy to get you out of your reading slump because they're written to be suspenseful and to get you to want to keep reading to figure out what is going on so with that said this one's perfect because a tv show is also being made for it and there's three books out so if you end up loving the first one you still have two more to read and to get you back into the reading and it'll lead you back into that so that's a good girl's guide to murder by holly jackson it's very popular but it's popular for a reason once again it's turning into a tv show that i'm very very thrilled about i'm so excited to see what they do with it 
it. If you love Crime Junkie and if you love the podcast Serial, this is it. It's basically our main character is doing this kind of like senior capstone kind of vibe project for her high school and she wants to do it on this murder that happened at her high school years before and a lot of things go on. It's a small town murder and people think that the boyfriend did it. So if you really love Crime Junkie, definitely give this a read. If you have not listened to Crime Junkie, go listen to Crime Junkie. It's addictive. If you like crime shows and podcasts, crime podcasts. And finally, we have another book I don't shut up about and that's The Grimrose Girls. There are two books in this series. They're both fairly thick, but they read like nobody's business. This one basically takes place at this like kind of mythical college and there are four girls and one of them ends up turning up dead. Everyone thinks that it's an accident except for her best friends. And so suddenly a new girl moves into their room and she ends up finding a book in the wardrobe of fairy tales. And it turns out all of these fairy tales are relating to the people that reside at the elite private school. It's very dark and mysterious, but also you just fall in love with all of these characters. I bought this one and then halfway through I had to buy the next one. Another good jumping off point because it's such a big mystery and each girl has some mystery going on about it and it's so interesting to see how all of these different fairy tales are woven into these two books. But yeah, these are all the books that I recommend to get you out of a reading slump. All of these have whether or not they have gotten me out of a reading slump or I've just binge read them recently. I think they're really good books to get you out of. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know what books got you out of a reading slump when you had one and if you have any binge-worthy reads. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this was helpful and introduced you to some binge-worthy books. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.